Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today I thought we could take a quick look at Ashen, an interesting Souls-like game that released over a year ago on the Epic Games Store but is now just hitting Steam. All the footage in this video was recorded at 1440p using the game's ultra settings preset on our Sapphire Pulse RX5700. So far, I've only actually played the game for around 6 hours and in order to minimise the risk of any spoilers, I'm only actually going to be using gameplay from the first couple, so my experience with the game does go further than what you're going to see in this footage. Normally, when I make one of these videos, I will start off by taking a look at the gameplay, mechanics and structure before then going on to the presentation and performance. However, this time I'm going to flip that on its head for the simple reason that it was actually the game's presentation that put it on my radar in the first place. Visually, the art style manages to be both highly detailed and yet minimalist at the same time. Characters lack faces and look as if they've been modelled from clay, and while I thought that this would come across rather jarring, it doesn't, it just adds to the feeling of mystery. The environments themselves are simply gorgeous. Desaturated colour palettes contrast with the use of a wide gamut, turning landscapes into what can only be described as watercolour in motion. Ashen also makes great use of both light and darkness, both visually and in terms of gameplay. Caves and dungeons are suitably dark, with the light from your lantern doing just enough to lead the way without lifting that veil of darkness that encapsulates you. The soundscapes during these sections are also top notch, and at times they're legitimately creepy. The weapons and the movements also manage to sound weighty while avoiding outright realism, it's a style that works really well in tandem with the abstract visuals. Now I've heard some people stating that the voice acting is pretty bad, however I have to disagree. Characters speak with the same sort of cadence that we hear from many of the NPCs in Dark Souls. Lines are spoken in a deliberately exaggerated way that reminds me a lot of narration of dialogue in audiobooks. While I can appreciate that this flavour of voice acting may not appeal to everyone, I believe that the developers have achieved the sound that they were aiming for. What a sight. Our world once more bathed in ashen light. You have felt the power of the ashen and survived. We will need that strength of yours. The Ashen is still a sleeping child. Vulnerable. We must wake it from its slumber. When it comes to the music though, I think that most people would agree that it's pretty damn awesome. To be completely honest, I'm not exactly a connoisseur when it comes to music in video games, but I do at least know what I like. Ashen makes great use of its soundtrack to elicit emotional responses, it can ramp up that feeling of tension one moment and then soothe it the next. I think it's pretty safe to say that the presentation as a whole could likely be considered a good enough reason to pick up the game on its own, and thanks to the unique abstract stylings, there's no doubt in my mind that we could come back to Ashen in a decade's time and still be impressed. When it came to the performance, we had no issues holding a solid 60fps minimum throughout our playtime, at 1440p and using the game's ultra settings preset on our Sapphire Pulse RX5700. So we know that the presentation is excellent and the performance is great, but what about the gameplay? Like I mentioned earlier, Ashen, put simply, is a Souls-like and it borrows heavily from that Soulsborne formula. When you die, you drop your souls, however, here they're called Scoria, though for the most part they are treated identically. You respawn at the last bonfire you rested at, however here they're called Ritual Stones. Resting or respawning at a Ritual Stone will respawn most of the enemies, you, you get the idea. Ashen wears its inspiration on its sleeve, I mean heck, the story even appears to be pretty much identical. What this means is that if you're a fan of games in the genre, you should already have a pretty decent idea of what that core gameplay loop is going to entail. However, there are a few changes and additions, as well as a few shortcomings that you should be aware of. For instance, it seems that the game has really been designed around the co-op experience, even going as far to have doors and certain routes that require you to work together in order to open or bypass. This also extends to the layout of enemies in certain areas, where fighting them solo can sometimes feel unfair, almost as if the combat system struggles against multiple enemies due to staggered attack timings and their ability to surround a single player. 
By no means is any of this a deal breaker, but it can make going solo sometimes a little bit tedious. So finding someone to jump on with is maybe going to be your best option. While the game does offer an AI control companion, I have a sneaky suspicion that it's not entirely working as expected. There were multiple occasions where my companion would just seemingly vanish, only to return a short time later when I reached a point where they were required in order for me to progress. At first, I assumed that this was intended, but it soon started to feel super inconsistent to the point where I am now convinced that it must have been a bug. That said, this is a Souls-like, so there's a good chance that maybe I'm just misunderstanding something. However, due to the fact that the game is supposedly designed around co-op, I somewhat doubt it. One of these small little additions that I did enjoy was the ability to run and jump, along with the ability to grab all the ledges and climb. These abilities managed to make the traversal of the environments and the hunt for hidden areas so much more engaging. The way that you improve your character's stats has also changed. Rather than leveling up by spending your scorer, aka souls, you improve your health and stamina through the completion of quests or finding special feathers throughout the world. Scoria is still extremely valuable, however. You will need to have lots of it in order to upgrade your gourd and your weapons, as well as using it to buy stuff from traders. Where things really start getting a little awkward to talk about is in the combat. Not because it's particularly bad, but rather because it's, let's just say, limited. You're still going to be relying on stamina to string together heavy and light attacks with dodges and rolls while using a wide array of weaponry from single-handed axes and huge double-handed maces right through to throwable spears. However, you're going to be doing so against a rather sparse selection of enemy types with weapons that mostly end up feeling functionally the same as each other. Now, I don't think that there is anything inherently wrong with this combat system. Attacks feel nice and snappy, it controls well, and there's some legitimate thought that goes into manipulating the enemies. There's actually been quite a few games recently that are more souls light than souls like that have had combat systems which are much more limited in scope than it is here, and they've still done fairly well. Games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Darksiders 3, and even from Soft's very own Shakiro Shadows Die Twice to name a few. Just don't jump into Ash and expect him to experiment with lots of different builds as that's not really going to happen. I don't think you can really get away with talking about a game like this without at least quickly touching on the difficulty slash challenge. Like I mentioned a couple of times already, I've not actually managed to play all that much, so I can't really attest to how the difficulty is going to ramp up or change. All I can tell you is that right now, the game appears to be very fair. I've yet to come across an enemy that didn't properly telegraph their moves, and I don't feel too starved for resources. The only times where that feeling of unfairness have even crept in was when the AI control companion would either vanish or go to aggro, bringing too many enemies at once, causing you to be surrounded. So, fingers crossed, this doesn't devolve as the journey continues. In conclusion, Ashen appears to be much more of a Dark Souls clone than just another Souls-like. It manages to, at least mostly, capture that feeling of wonder and discovery that this specific genre is known for. Based on my own limited playtime, I would even go as far to say that if you've never given this genre a try, Ashen would likely deliver you a smoother entry point than most of its contemporaries. From a presentation point, Ashen delivers on all fronts. It's a game that I really hope to be able to put some more time into over the coming holidays, and while I would never really give a blanket recommendation to a Souls-like game, I would happily recommend it to fans of the genre and those out there looking for something a little different and maybe more challenging than what they're used to, especially if they've got a buddy to bring along for the ride. But anyway, once again, that is going to be me done for today. If you are new around here, then how about slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. Also, if you liked this video, please do consider leaving us a like, and if you disliked it, there's a button for that too, and all we ask is that you please let us know why you disliked it so we can try and improve in future. Do you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback? Leave it down in the comment section down below, and I will try and get back to you. With all that said, from myself and everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we will catch you later. Bye-bye.